it might be hard to remember, but once upon a time, we actually had these things called slow news weeks, especially the weeks after holidays. Well, this week was not one of those weeks. Coronavirus cases in the U.S. keep hitting grim milestones. New COVID closures and restrictions keep popping up across the country. The Supreme Court keeps delivering blockbuster decisions, and the question of what in God's name we're going to do about schools keeps baffling leaders all over the state. So I hope you had a good Fourth of July, but the holiday's over now, and politically speaking, we keep going. From NBC7 News, this is Politically Speaking. Thank you for joining us on Politically Speaking. I'm your host, Danny Freeman. At the end of our last show, I promised that today we'd be officially diving into the race for November, and we're keeping that promise. But of course, we're still not losing sight of the coronavirus, so our themes for today's show are elections and education. We bring you one of the candidates in San Diego's exciting 77th District Assembly race, where the incumbent switched parties, prompting fury from Republicans. We also get a spirited update from two stellar reporters on what in the world schools will look like in a couple of weeks. But we begin with the most high profile race at the county level, which could decide who controls the Board of Supervisors. We're talking the race for District 3 stretches from Encinitas to Escondido. Here's my interview with economist and attorney Democrat Tara Lawson Reamer. So, of course, since this is your first time on Politically Speaking, I want to start off. Please tell me, why are you running for this seat? Well, I'm a third generation San Diegan. Um, actually, my grandpa was a Marine stationed at Camp Pendleton. So I, I think I have a lot of devotion to my community. Um, and there's some big issues that face the future of San Diego County that I'm really passionate about. Um, climate change, we've certainly seen our county uh, going in the wrong direction on climate for a really long time. Um, traffic and sprawl development. Um, these are things that are really important to me. I mean, I grew up hiking in mountains around here and um, to, to see them being paved over with big McMansions that people can't even afford to live in. Uh, affordable housing, that's another issue that's uh, really close to my heart. Um, you know, growing up here, uh, it, was, it was really a place for middle-class families and now it's hard for middle-class families. It's basically out of reach to buy a home. Um, protecting our beaches and our coastlines, I'm a surfer. And when I see you know, dolphins swimming in, um, in water that's polluted with bacteria and carcinogens, it honestly, it just breaks my heart. And I think about my own daughter, uh, you know, I really want her to grow up surfing. And I want to teach her to surf. And I think about her paddling out in raw sewage. And um, these are all problems that we can solve. And I think San Diego is just such a wonderful place. Um, and it, it just deserves such better leadership. And I'm excited to to bring the kind of leadership to San Diego that I think that we need. Well, so let's jump into some of those hot topics right now. I think, of course, the most pressing issue of the moment is the coronavirus, and I think we're going to hear a lot about it over the next couple of months as well, especially in the political sense. First off, uh, do you think we as a county opened up too quickly at the expense of public health? So it's a good question because uh, we've clearly seen a massive, massive upsurge in cases. I don't want to say a couple things about that. First of all, I was pretty appalled uh, with when my opponent, uh, Kristen Gaspar, who I'm running against, called for an early reopening on May 1st. So this was before we were even hitting the deadlines and hitting the goals and hitting the targets that the governor had outlined. She was out there asking for us to get an exception to the rule to accelerate a reopening, which is just so egregiously irresponsible, uh, not only to our public health, which is obvious, but also to the health of our economy, because uh, public health and a, a healthy economy go hand in hand. You, you really can't have a stable economy and ec our economy getting back on track if, if we don't uh, get the coronavirus under control. So um, I think we uh, took the right action early um, with social distancing, with the shelter in place. Um, I think that we were hitting the target, so it made sense to open. Where I think we went really wrong were some of the folks that were just very irresponsible, right? Uh, congregating in indoor locations, disregarding uh, recommendations to wear masks. So uh, we, uh, we've gotten off track because people were not responsible. And so we now have to shut down again to get those cases to start falling. And if uh, we're going to reopen safely, people are going to have to wear masks and practice social distancing um, and really put 
the health of each other first. But Supervisors Desmond and Kristen Gaspar, your opponent, they would respond and say, listen, we needed to get the economy back and going because unemployment was hitting 25 percent around that mark uh, at, at some of the worst parts of this. And uh, why not just punish the individual actors, as you say, who are not following the rules versus uh, taking sweeping gestures against industries like bars? And Supervisor Gaspar just asked for more local control of the uh, from the governor. Is that the right move? I think it's very much the wrong move, it, in my opinion, um, is evidence of a fundamental misunderstanding of the way economies work at all. I mean, as you mentioned, I'm an economist, and I worked in the Obama administration as a senior advisor in the Treasury Department. And uh, one of my colleagues there, Austin Goolsby, he was a chair of the Council of Economic Advisors uh, while I was in the administration. Um, he just came out with some new research. Uh, he's now an economist at the University of Chicago. It basically looks at uh, the, um, the fact that all of these economic drop-offs uh, are being driven by uh, the prevalence of the virus. So that the places that see higher rates of virus, whether they're open or closed, they're still seeing huge economic contractions. So it's the virus itself and people being afraid of the virus that uh, undermines consumer confidence, undermines consumer spending, and is what is really holding our economy back. So whether we're open or closed from what the government says, what really matters is what the virus is doing because that's what's driving consumer behavior. So I think that uh, clearly the first step is to get the coronavirus under control, get those cases down so that we can have the kind of consumer confidence and business confidence that we need to get the economy moving again. You've managed to rally an impressive amount of uh, local Democrats, of local high profile Democrats on your team. We saw photos from a packed virtual fundraiser last month. Um, but The Voice of San Diego reported that also last month, uh, Olga Diaz, who uh, ran against you and Kristen Gaspar in the primary, also a Democrat, uh, she's not yet necessarily still on board. She said, quote, you benefit from my sacrifice and work in North County and your privilege is a reflection of everything wrong with politics and society. I just wanted to get your response to that criticism and ask, you know, will Democrats be united uh, behind you in November? I think we're already united. I mean, I'll, I think... It was actually quite a privilege uh, being able to run uh, with Olga. I think we always said we ran with each other, not against each other. And before the primary, we both said we would support the other one, whoever made it through. So, you know, I feel really good about that. Um, you know, she was always incredibly supportive and warm, um, and I felt the same about her. Uh, so I think that we do already have a united front. Um, and, you know, more broadly, it's not just about, uh, a couple people, it's sort of like a whole big tent. It's not only uh, the electeds, which is important, right? But it's also really the grassroots movement. So I think certainly we have a united front um, kind of in terms of electeds, but also at a grassroots level, um, it's just been really exciting. I mean, I've had folks who were supporting Olga in the primary and reach out to me and tell them, tell me, you know, you know what, we thought you guys were both amazing women, um, amazing candidates, and we're so excited to be able to support you, Tara, moving forward. I think we were ready to finally bring the kind of change and the kind of leadership we need to the Board of Supervisors. Tara lawson Weimer, thank you very much for your time. Uh, stay safe on the campaign trail. Thank you so much. You can find much more of our extensive interview on my Facebook page, Danny E. Freeman, NBC. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking. After a local assembly member switched parties last year, Republicans vowed to unseat him. I speak with the GOP challenger next. Plus, what will schools actually look like in a matter of weeks? Stay with us.